No. Okay. Yeah, I got it here. Can you share it on the ACD Express? We will give some time. Now, uh, some of us say that there are comments that Zoom is also good. I, uh, it is good, but Zoom, we cannot have this overlay. You know? We cannot have this overlay. And uh, Rioste, Restream has give a, given us the option to have overlay. So we have our title, our college, the program, and so forth is the uh, reason why we are choosing this uh, platform. All right, let me continue my speech, welcome speech. We, are, we apologize for the inconvenience cause. It is beyond our control. It is the network is uh, BSNL has been very be, has become very unreliable. One time we say we have network, and the next time it's gone. And so now we are relying on our mobile network, and uh, that may work better. Let us see. And uh, I welcome all the staff and students, uh, the returning students, as well as the uh, new students at this uh, new academic year. Uh, every year at the beginning of the academic year, we begin, our, uh, we begin with our orientation program. Now, orientation program is to familiarize you with how the, the college functions or just or let us say with the systems of the college everybody has systems and ect has its own systems and then we want to uh, uh, help our students the new students uh, integrate into the system as they start enrolling uh, themselves and so we will have uh, different uh, officials coming up and sharing us about uh, their respective responsibilities and the things that we will need to know. And uh, <clears throat> I want you all to pay attention to what they say. And those are the things that we will be following. And uh, we want our students to be compliant with all the rules and the regulations that are being enforced uh, in the institution. And then, uh, while we uh, welcome all of uh, you, both staff and students, we want to thank our new students for choosing ECT to be a place of their theological training. And we want to, we want to assure you that here at ECT, we're striving our best uh, to make 
your studies and your training worthwhile. And we want you to know that there are thousands of people praying for us and praying for the students. And uh, we, the staff and the faculty members here in the institution, we are also doing our best to make your theological training most worthwhile. And I uh, welcome you again, and I thank you for choosing a city uh, to be a place of your training. And uh, we used to have diploma program, but uh, since those who have completed their class 10 were rather want to finish their 12, 11 and 12, we have uh, very, very few applicants for diploma courses. And besides, with the new introduction of uh, Indian theological system, uh, we will, uh, we are likely not to have any more class 10 pass candidates as high school will be up to 12. So even those who completed high school, they will be completing 12 class under the new Indian education policy. And so we are making these changes to keep up with the India with the change of the Indian educational system. And another reason is because of the introduction of Master of Theology program. We have uh, limited classrooms, and so uh, we feel that continuing continuing with the diploma process is becoming. Are unnecessary and so we have stopped taking new students from this academic year the current students will will be allowed to complete their courses but no more new students for diploma will be taken <clears throat> so we have a BTH bachelor of theology for those who completed their uh, uh, 12 class and then AT has given us a provision to admit uh, senior candidates who have completed 10 class on the condition go through, uh, they go through a qualifying exam. And we are allowed to have only 10% uh, from the total class, such candidates. And this has been a help for some senior students who uh, have a desire to study theology. And so you may have completed your 10 class and may not have completed your 12th class, but you are above 25 years, 30 years or more. Uh, there is a possibility that you can be taken in to the BTH program. I will have to go through the qualifying exam. And uh, we have our Bachelor of Theology and then our Master of Theology, uh, sorry, Master of Divinity program. This is also a three year program beyond the BTH and graduate programs. And so those who graduated in any field or those who have completed their BTH, they can study Master of Divinity. BTS graduates who have higher grades can complete within two years. But any graduates and students who have lower grades will have to go through the top three years to complete the MD uh, degree. Now, one thing we want to clarify at this point is that ATA has set a limit of credit hours for MD students as well as BTA students to complete the courses. Now we, we need to understand that what ATA has set is a minimum requirement. 
and then any colleges, any college, any institution under the accreditation of ATA has the freedom to add more credits, uh, more credits according to the uh, the emphasis of their program. Those who want to emphasize in missiology can add more missiological subjects in their MD. All those who want to emphasize on New Testament or biblical subjects, they can add more courses to the uh, biblical subjects and uh, require a higher rate than the minimum set by ATA. Therefore, we want to understand our students also. ECT also has its own set of requirements. Just, just because you have completed the ATA requirement doesn't mean that you can graduate without completing all the courses. Students need to understand that ECT has its own requirement of credit hours and its own courses which are to be completed. And so uh, I want us to understand uh, this also. I'm explaining this because occasionally there are some students who, and then they say before they have fully completed the course, they say that I have earned enough credits for a set by ATA, why don't you let me graduate? So we want you to know that we have our own credits uh, requirements and one need to complete those requirements in order to graduate from our college. I want to mention in, uh, for instance, if you check the SIAX MD curriculum, you will see that they have the highest credit requirements uh, for uh, Master of Divinity. And they are well known for their academic standard, and so uh, their requirements are also higher. And so it's the same with every other colleges. We all have our set of requirements, and our students have to complete those requirements. The limit set by ATA is a minimum limit, and uh, all colleges have the freedom to go beyond it, and we also do the same. So for such matters, you will need to see the academic dean, who could not join us today because of his sickness. And we want you all to keep him in prayer. So we ran Dr. Tizang Kotang Haukip. He has been down with uh, sickness and he is under home treatment. And let us pray that he will uh, recover soon. And then uh, we want to understand that our classes will begin with online class. And then we will, we are projecting this online class till the month of September or till our midterm exam. So until exam, our classes will go online. And then by the end of midterm, we are hopeful that we will be able to run normal classes. Now, whether the lockdown continues or not, this is what we plan. We require all our staff and our students to get uh, COVID vaccine. I have completed my full dose, my second dose of COVID vaccine. And we, uh, every one of us, both staff and students, would have completed our second dose of COVID vaccine by September. And then we will take, uh, take a print out of all our certificates, COVID vaccine certificates, and we will approach the district administration and we will require, request them to allow us to normal classes. 
and hopefully uh, we will be given uh, the permission and so we are projecting that we will all get our COVID vaccine till September and then from the middle of September after the midterm we will continue normal classes. The problem with online classes is that our networks are so unreliable. Many of our students are in remote hill villages. They don't have network in their homes. They have to go to the hills in the open place on the mountains to access the internet and attend the classes. It is not uh, always possible because of the weather, the rain, and because more people flock in areas where there are networks and they cause a lot of noises and it's difficult and inconvenient for students to join online classes from those uh, places. And so uh, we will manage until the midterm with online classes and soon after the online class, uh, the midterm is over, we hope to resume with normal class. And we want all our students, even those who are staying in remote places and far places, to prepare to travel back uh, to the college by mid-September with your own uh, respective COVID vaccine certificates. This is uh, very important and we want you all uh, to keep in mind. And uh, I will take time to introduce our faculty members. And so I'd like to ask them to come and stand by my side one by one as I call their names, so that those who are watching from the distance uh, may be able to see them. Uh, especially for new students, you will be communicating with the teachers without ever seeing each other face to face. And it will be helpful to, you know, to picture their face in your mind as you listen to their online teachings. And so uh, I would like to call you one by one. We'll start from here. Uh, we'll ask Reverend Go Min Loon to come over, please. This is Reverend Min Loon. He will be teaching theology. All subjects related to theology, he will be handling Christian theology, systematic theology, and ethics. All those subjects, he is the master, all right? He has master of theology in uh, Christian theology. So he will be the one teaching. He married and he has how many children? Three children, okay? All right? Reverend Ngam Kolal. This is Reverend Nam Kolal. Uh, he is also the practical ministry director. <clears throat> and so he will be evaluating your practical ministry involvements. So be careful with him, okay? <laughs> and then uh, he, he will be teaching the uh, classes. And then uh, he is speci specialized in general studies. And so, uh, he is married and has how many? Three children. I think uh, all our faculty members mostly have three children. <laughs> okay? Thank you. Uh, ben Joy. Uh, this Ben Joy Vipe, he is a clerk at the uh, office and he handles every type work and he is also a computer graphic expert and you have your ipad you have your printing work and all computer related works that you need in the office is the one who handles it okay treat him well so he will treat you well uh you're married how many children okay he also has three children 
All right, Edzer. This is Reverend Edzer Vipe. He lives in the campus and he is the Dean of Students, the Warden. And so all those who are staying in the hostel, they report to him uh, and care of them. And he helped them in their needs and solve their problems. He is also an MTH graduate and he will be teaching uh, what classes? Homiletics uh, and general studies. Okay. He is married and has on so far one one child one child. Okay. Reverend Kai Hao, uh, the rest I want you to stand in line so that we don't have to wait. Okay. This is Reverend Kai Hao Mate. He is currently serving as the register. And then uh, he is teaching bookkeeping to MDF students. Uh, he is an expert in accounts. And those of you who need to know, uh, you will learn much from him. He is married. How many children? Huh? Four. Four. He has four children. OK, thank you. This is uh, Mrs. Lambe Mate the wife of Reverend Kai Hao Mate. She is serving as accountant. And all those of you who has, uh, who needs to pay fees, any financial dealing you have to do with the college, you have to do with her. Uh, she's married and they have four children. Okay. This is uh, Redeem Lalrem Sang. She is an MTH graduate, and then she is teaching uh, mostly New Testament subjects. Uh, she is also married, and then her husband is a pastor, and then he, they have three, three children. Three is our number. <laughs> okay, thank you. And then this is uh, Moite Priscilla Moite Singson. Uh, she, uh, she has been teaching here for many years. Uh, she's teaching uh, like Old Testament subjects and then uh, some general subjects as well. And her husband is the general director of ECCI. They have how many children? Two children. Two children. Okay, thank you. This is, uh, this young man's name is Kevin Mangnun Vaipei. Uh, he is an Old Testament scholar. He completed his MPAs in Old Testament from SIAX. And then he is teaching Old Testament subjects, Old Testament history, and Hebrew, Hebrew grammar, alphabet. So you, those of you who are uh, new students, be ready to, uh, interact with him on Old Testament subjects. Uh, he, I think unfortunately, he has not found his, uh, his ribs. So let us pray that he will find one soon. Okay, thank you. Uh, you remove your mask. This is Miss Angela. She completed her MTH in Missiology. And she is teaching missiology subjects. Uh, she, she is unmarried. Uh, still looking for the right man. <laughs> OK, thank you. Here's another young man, Mr. Lun Min Tang, uh, Lung Din. He completed his uh, Master of Theology from UBS in the subject of? Pastoral care, Pastoral care and counseling. And he is also, he's teaching on practical theology subjects. And then he is also still looking for uh, the lost rib. Hopefully he will find soon. Okay. Thank you.
All right, this is Gagan Gangte, who recently found his lost rib. And now he's married, and uh, they are yet to have a children. He is our history, his MTH in Charles history. And so all subject related to history, he will be the one who, who will be dealing with. And so any historical uh, questions that you have, he is the right person to ask. He's married, yet to have children. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is Mary Zone Varte. Uh, she completed her MTH in missiology. And, but we are using her as a librarian. So he takes care of all your library needs. And of course, he teaches one or two subjects like English grammar. Uh, but you will mostly see her confined to the library. So you will contact her for any library needs you may have in the future. Uh, by the way, she's also unmarried, still looking for the right man to come along. Okay, good. That's all. Okay, uh, we have two of our faculty members missing today. One is our academic dean, vice principal, Reverend Dr. Tizam Khotang Haukit. And then Cecil uh, Singh Soon, our New Testament scholar. Of course, oh, sorry, not only two, three. And then one of our senior most lecturer, Reverend Dr. Kaitin Kap Vaipe. He is also unable to turn up because of some other inconvenience. And we pray that uh, all will be well with them, our vice principal. And Sejalen, they are sick, and I think Reverend Dr. Kaitin Kabi is also not feeling well. And so let us keep them in our prayers also. So these are the team, the group that you will be interacting a lot during the course of your studies. And we want you to pray for us, to keep us in your prayers, and be attentive to us, be obedient to us, do whatever we ask you to do and it will go well with you. And I would like to end my speech here. And before I do, I want to introduce our uh, main speaker for today, Reverend Pao uh, Tang Singh Soon, General Director, ECCI. May I request him to come here briefly? This is Reverend Simpson, General Director of the Evangelical Congregational Church of India. Uh, he will be giving us an exhortation message, and also he will be praying for all of us as we embark on a new academic year. Thank you. All right, uh, we will continue uh, with our program uh, we don't have it uh, the other faculty member taking their time will take up one after another and then whatever they are saying today we will make it available on a script and we will circulate it on our whatsapp platform uh, thank you very much and i welcome you once again every one of you to this new academic year at this in, uh, institution Thank you, and may God bless each one of you. Good afternoon, once again. Um, what I'm going to highlight this afternoon is about your registration. Uh, with regards to registration, all students or returning students, you may go directly to the accountant and do your registration. Uh, and those who want to stay in the hostel, before entering the hostel, you must meet the dean of students, and then he will allot you your room. 
before meeting the academic uh, dean of students, uh, you cannot simply enter the hostel. That is for returning students. And for new students, newcomers, uh, we could not do any entrance exam and personal interview because of lockdown. We just accept your application uh, after going through your photoshop documents and accept your application and at you provisionally. So you need to produce all the original certificates which you have submitted along with your application when our situation is normal. Then only your registration or admission will be fully confirmed. <clears throat> Number two, students admitted to BTH1 who could not submit their class, 12 class certificate because of COVID-19 must submit your 12 certificate within the current semester. That, is that means before December, you must submit your class to your certificate within your admission is not fully confirmed. Number three, those of you who submitted your application online, the reference form link is sent to your pastor or church elder, whom you keep as some did not submit the form till now. Contact your leaders and ask them to fill up the form and submit it. Without this form, your application or admission is incomplete. And number four, those of you who are admitted to MDIP course from B Brown, from non ATA college, need to write qualifying exams on three papers biblical studies, theology, and Christian ministry during the month of August. Question will be set at BTH level. If you, if you fail in this qualifying exam, there is no way of getting ATA registration. If you work for college degree that is not ATA, you may continue your studies here as in deep class. Uh, this is all what I would like to inform you today. Thank you. At the very outset, we thank the Lord for this uh, opportunity to have online orientation program. And I'm standing here to talk about uh, the rules and regulation, mainly in related to the hostel matters. But before we go to the hostel matter, I'll also be talking about the general ethos and regulation. Uh, most of the things uh, what I'm going to talk about today is here in our student handbook and I request uh, not only presses, even the returning students to go through again and again. Uh, we'll begin with the general ethos and regulation. Uh, Punctuality should be maintained in all activities such as chapel service, class prayer meeting, social work, and other assigned works and announced events and program. And then cleanliness in personal appearance is highly valued. Modesty in dress, hairstyle, makeup, etc. should be maintained. <coughs> Especially in the seminary, uh, we have to be aware, be aware of our health, hairstyle and makeup and uh, our dress. And we don't uh, allow the students, those of who are even in the hostel, uh, to wear a shirt without uh, half sleeve. So uh, they can, you can wear a half sleeve when you do social work or when you are Playing. Other than that, we don't allow. And then no one is encouraged to take 
outside engagement that would affect attendance of attendance and class of class and study. And the next one, abuse of drugs, using tobacco in its various forms such as cigarettes, biri, kaini, raza, talab, and the uh, not betel nut, pan chewing. So, uh, if anyone is found using or abuse of drugs, will be uh, it might lead to expulsion, mm -hmm. and we take it as a serious offense, which might lead to expulsion. And any kind of unhealthy relation between opposite sex may automatically lead to expulsion. And then uh, attendance of the class is of paramount importance on the academic side. Application for leave in case of sickness, family crisis, emergency and emergency may be directly addressed to the principal. And then college properties such as furniture, musical instrument, games and sport matters and books should not be lent to outsiders. Okay, um, that is uh, some of the uh, general ethos and regulation for all of the students. And now I'm, I'll be talking mainly in related to the hostel students. Uh, now, at present, students are welcome to stay in the hostel by producing vaccination certificate, COVID vaccination certificate. If anyone of you like to stay in the hostel, um, you can stay if you are already vaccinated. Also, um, additional rules and regulation for hostelers. Do not disturb others during library hours, quiet time, and don't prayer. And light must be put off at 10 p.m. in summer and 9.30 p.m. in winter. And after which, uh, if anyone is uh, willing to study, uh, they can uh, they go to uh, Dinwiddie Hall, and the ladies may go to their study hall. And then the next one, anyone coming to dining hall for meals more than 10 minutes late may forfeit his or her food unless any information is received beforehand. Eating outside the dining hall is not permitted. Violation of this will re result in a fine of 100 rupees up to two times. If it is violated more than two times, the matter will be taken to the higher authority. So no one uh, to come late for the meal. And then uh, separate cooking and preparing food curry is not permitted, unless in case of sickness. And taking plates and up into your own room is not permitted. Any item found in the room will incur a fine of 50 per item. Then absence of any social work or assigned duty will incur a fine of 100 rupees. Then avoid entering another room, especially in the absence of the occupant. And then the next one, do not take visitor into your room, meet them at the lawns or outside. This one, at present, having visitors are not entertained for the time being because due to the pandemic, those of who are in the hostel, uh, we did not entertain visitors at this time. And do not use tape players, radio, musical instrument, and anything that will produce disturbing noise during study hours. Singing song other than the gospel song is not permitted. And then the next one, quarreling, using provocative language and tone are strictly forbidden. Shouting at somebody is to avoid at all costs. So Christian.
spirit gentleness in all, all you're dealing with others. And then uh, the next one. Here we have a student is permitted twice in a semester to go home for weekend for acceptable reason. Married men are permitted once a month. Permission must be obtained from the dean of students. This also due to the pandemic, permission is not granted at the moment. And separate shopping days set aside for men and women should be strictly followed. And this also due to the pandemic for the time being, no shopping will be allowed. And then body frisking may be done on the student anytime by the dean of students. So those are uh, some of the important uh, rules that the student have to abide with. It. And um, I will not um, read out the timetable, maybe according to the time uh, the timetable, the schedule we have for the hostelers, we'll, I'll let them know to the hosteler like this. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> uh, practical ministry. We are sorry to say that due to the pandemic from last year, 2020 so far we have received any report from a student uh, about practical ministry but i'd like to read out some of the important things especially for the new student we have different kinds of practical ministry here in our college as a student you are required to do or you are required to perform uh, some kind, different kinds of practical ministry. The first one is weekend practical ministry during the semester. Every weekend and during summer and winter, vacations are required for students to have experience in Christian ministry of different kind in and around Chirichanpu town. Uh, this is some kind of weekend practical ministry to be involved in uh, like Sunday school and orphanage home and some other places. They may contact churches and leaders to find where they can assist and teach in Sunday school and other opportunities for practical ministries during the semester. And the next one is students are required to spend at least 15 days during summer and winter vacation. They may arrange a group or join any other group according to the, their conveniences and involve in practical ministry during vacation, but always under the supervision of a mature leader, mature person. These practical ministries are assessed as three credit awards according to their performances and marked as S for satisfactory and BS for below satisfactory to students who did not perform well in their practical ministries. Lastly, practical ministry reports must be submitted to the director of practical ministry within three days of arrival on the campus. And remember that there will be a practical ministry award, which was <coughs> given out on the graduation day. The, those are the things that you need to do uh, in regard to practical ministry. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello everyone, uh, I am Miss Mary Jones and I am your librarian. 
I will be sharing to you about uh, the library resources, library service, and general use of the library. Uh, with regard to this PDA, uh, with this library rules and regulation, in order to save time, I will be sending you the rules and regulations in WhatsApp group. So each and every students are required to go to it. For the benefit of the students, research scholars and faculty, the library have a good collection of 20,000 physical books, 10,000 electronic books, and a digital library which contains a collection of 10,000 books. The library also have a good collection of print journals and, or, and online journals. Let me uh, tell or share you or define what are physical books, e-books and digital libraries. First, a physical book is a book which can be accessed in the library and it is found in a physical copies. These physical books are divided into three forms. One is general books, which can be uh, borrowed for a period of seven days. And reserve books, they are kept reserved and can be borrowed for a period of one night, overnight. And these generally are books, the reserve books are books which are kept for semester. And lastly, it is the uh, reference books. Reference book contains like encyclopedia, commentaries, and dictionaries. So these are meant for reference and are not meant for borrowing. Let me talk about ebooks. Ebooks, which is also a short form of electronic books, is a publication made available in digital form, consisting of text, pages, readable books, which can be access to uh, internet protocol address which will be given to you and it also will be pasted in all the laptop in all the computer tables and uh, this can be readable through computers laptops uh, tablets and smartphones and lastly we have a digital library a digital library is a library in which collections of books are stored in digital formats and are accessible by computers, laptops, and smartphones, for which an access code will be sent to you through WhatsApp or in other form. I will, as I will be sending you the rules and regulation, I will highlight some of the very important rules and regulation. Maintaining absolute silence is very important because it is meant for studies, and uh, spitting, eating, chewing, etc. inside the library is strictly prohibited. Do not put back the books you have taken out of the shelf. Please leave the books on the tables. Remember, misplaced book is a lost book. Every student is expected to be in the library during the library hour and should not leave before the library hour is over. One day absentees will be fined 30 rupees. Taking out of books without checking out, without that is without, without propining it out, will be treated as theft, and the concerned student may be punished. Always close books after use. Do not leave it open, face down, or pile up on top of another. And do not mark or underline books. Do not fold the leaves. If you want to mark a certain place, use a temporary bookmark as a piece of paper. That is all for and thank you. Hi, everyone. I greet you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I would like to thank God for this opportunity. And I am also thankful to our principal. And warm welcome. I give my warm welcome to the new and new students. 
I want to tell you that ECP is a God-given college for your theological training, and it is one of the God's great instrument to train and uh, build up thousands of people. And I think ECT had done well in the past. So I'm sure that God had done to thousands of people, maybe done to do to you, and He will still be doing, and He will doing, He will be doing even in the future. So I request all the students with a, having a great expectation, do your best to be in the ministry ahead. And as, uh, as since last year, we have been experiencing the pandemic. So sometimes I feel like we are almost, we are almost in the sick bed because the government have imposed uh, total shutdown and we are unable to move around. We are compelled to close our office and even our college. And we cannot live a normal life and life is uneasy, uneasy and we have to survive uh, and we have to be in at home and could not go anywhere so even when we look around we could see that many people are suffering and some people have gone to be with the Lord so we have we feel pain in our hearts but we cannot do anything and we are helpless. Though we live in such a drastic, difficult situation, God has be, God is being faithful to us and He kept us alive till today. And we are able to begin our new semester today. So as we begin our new semester, let's hope and pray that. The coming day will be different, though there are coronavirus is still, though the trade of coronavirus is still uh, looming large. And this morning, uh, I'm not going to share uh, a very long message, but I'm going to share with you a very short message from Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. I hope this will, this message will help us to encourage ourselves and move forward in these uncertain and difficult times. So may, shall we look, uh, shall we turn to the word of God, Philippians chapter 3 verse uh, 13. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I'm going to share with you about what, about one thing that Paul did. Here, uh, Paul had used analogy of running the race to con gave his uh, conviction. In verse 13, you see that Paul said, one thing I do, not many things, but only one thing. What did Paul do for forgetting what lies and moving toward the goal? Move forward and moving toward the goal. We can look at the past we can learn from the past, but we cannot look, live in the past. We have to give the past to Jesus. There are two things that we must forget from our yesterdays. Our defeats and our victories. When we, it comes to the, uh, our defeats, we have to forget our injuries and wounds and let God, let God heal of those hearts. 
and we we should also put ourselves under the forgiveness of God and also We must forsake our success. We cannot live on yesterday's victory. You know, God gave Israelites a day manna. Probably, God did not want his children to live in their past. So he provided them for a day. So the next day, the Israelites had to collect a new manna for a day. And another thing for Paul, uh, forgetting the past has different possibility. The first thing could be his pre-Christian days where he was proud himself about his status in the uh, society and his scholarship and his popularity and all. And the second thing could be the past mistake that he had committed. And however, in this uh, passage, uh, in this verse, we can see that the main things that Paul speaks about forgetting the past is to forget his achievement and success. This is the most difficult practice for every one of us to follow, but God wants his children to forget the past and move ahead. I don't know why God wants his children to forget, not only to forget the past, but to look back. He wants us not to look back. Read in Genesis chapter 19. We read about the story of Lot and his family. God did not want Lot and his family to look back when they, they were directed to run toward the hills to save their lives. But unfortunately, Lot's wife turned back toward the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. And we all know what happened. She became a pillar of stone, a pillar of salt. She became useless as a result of disobeying God and as a result of turning back, looking behind. And we also see in the life of Israel, we all know that God loved Israelites, God loved his children, so he delivered them from the bondage of Egypt and he took them to the towards the uh, promised land that is Canaan but on their way to Canaan many things happened God had provided everything that they need God had provided food to eat when they are hungry God had provided water to drink when they are thirst and God had delivered them when their enemies are at them but you know Whenever God gives them something good or some blessings or some deliverance, they are happy for a moment. But their joy and happiness didn't last long. It's only for a moment. When they come to a new place and experience a new thing, having a new problem, Begun to murmur against God. Your happiness is gone. You know why? Because Israelites, though they were not in Egypt, they were no longer in Egypt, but still their minds, their heart, their thinking, their thoughts were always in Egypt. That gives them. To lead such a miserable life. Dear brothers and sisters, let us not repeat the same mistake that 
Israelite had committed. If you have a courage to look forward, to look, move ahead, what will help you, what will enable you to achieve your goal or to reach your destiny? And another man find in the book, in our Bible is that Zob. Zob was a great and faithful man. And he was also a, a rich man in the East. But unfortunately, Zob lost all his position within one day. Within the same day, he lost all his children. But we read in Zob chapter 1, verse 21, what did Zob, Zob say? The Lord gave me, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. See, after losing everything that he had, he could still praise the name of the Lord. And he could move ahead. We all know the result. At the end, what happens? We read in verse uh, chapter 42, verse 10, the Lord, when the Lord restored his fortune, he gave him twice as much as he had before. See? So I had the courage to move on. And at the end, God blessed him with double portion of blessings. Dear friends, I know we all have problems. We all have suffered and live, have to live an easy life. But in such a time as this, do only one thing. The one thing that we ought to do, we must do, is that forgetting what lies behind and move on. Move on. As I said, if you have a courage to move ahead, God will enable you. God will not let you fall. God will enable you to reach destiny. And God always in store double portion of blessings for those who have the courage to move on in life. So I want to request you to do one thing. Don't look behind. Forget the past. But move forward. God will help you and God will help you. So let me end my sharing here. So we look to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Our God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful day and wonderful time that you have given to us. And this afternoon, oh God, we come to you with a heart of gratitude for your kindness, for your goodness, for your and for your manifold blessing in our lives. We thank you for your faithfulness. You have been protecting us in a, from every dangerous, and you have been so good, and you have never leave us even when we go through trials and difficulties and you have brought us to this so that we could begin our new semester we thank you for that lord as we begin this new semester we confess for you oh god throughout this semester we ask that may you make everything new in our lives, in our mind, in our heart, and also help us and strengthen us and give us courage to move to the road that ahead of us. And also, Lord, give us ability beyond what we feel able so that you would be honored by our lives. 
I pray for all the students who have come with a great expectation to be equipped well here in this Bible College. I pray for them, O oh God. Give them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Give them more opportunity to learn about you and also about your word. And help them to experience about you and also provide all their needs by your uh, richness and glory. And also, we, I also pray for my colleagues, my friends, and the staffs of this Bible College. Lord, I thank you for their life and commitment to serve you and also to, for the, uh, to work hard for the advancement of this college. I thank you for using them this far. I pray that, Lord, please continue to use them to mold many more people for your kingdom. And also, Lord, help them to be faithful to you and also to the responsibility that you have given to each and every one of them. And also, Lord, give them strength to overcome problems, difficulties in all steps of life and lead them in your way and help them in everything that they do. And Lord, we pray once again that may your light shine in us, shine through us and over us so that we may make difference in this world for your glory and for the extension of your kingdom. We thank you for this offering. We pray that, Lord, may you bless us through this offering. May you bless our ministry. May you increase our ministry. May you uh, be with us throughout this semester as you, uh, you have accepted this offering of God. Thank you for everything. Thank you for hearing our humble prayer. In Jesus' blessed name we pray. Amen. Thank you, friends. That's all. Uh, now over to the principal. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, we have come to the end of the orientation program. I don't know how much you get from all what we said. Apart from that, whatever questions you have, you may uh, contact the right person. We will be happy to help with whatever questions you may have. And, uh, Since this will be online class, there will be uh, Google Classrooms. And then its teachers will create WhatsApp group for their respective classes. And so be sure to join the WhatsApp group and the classrooms. You will be able to join only with your ECT Google account. And so make sure that you have your password. If you need to reset your password, you contact us and we will be Happy to help. Okay, all the best too as you begin your study. Thank you. Uh,